Hello, everybody. So today we are going to discuss about uh, how to implement a kind of system able to monitor the condition of the medium voltage cable. Let's be concentrated on what happened in urban areas. These areas are very energy demanding and densely populated. Uh, in this kind of area, you can find industries, houses, hospitals, and transportations. So it's extremely important that the energy distribution uh, never stops. Uh, if this happens, is a big problem for everybody. According to the statistics, the summertime is the most critical period where the number of sudden failures occur more frequently. Why? Because uh, in summertime, especially in the months of May, June, July, a lot of people are still living in the cities. They are not on holiday. And because of the high temperature, they switch on their uh, AC uh, air conditioning uh, systems. So the energy demand will increase a lot. Plus the fact that the, the temperature is increasing, this creates a higher stress for the uh, medium voltage cables. For this reason, the number of sudden falls is increasing. So the distribution grid reliability needs to improve in order to guarantee the best service for the user and consumers. What are the typical tests uh, that uh, maintenance teams are performing in order to understand the condition of the cables? Typically are offline testings. So there is a test van, they go in the substation, in the primary substation where uh, the cable is present. So what they do is to apply typically high voltage and then perform some tests. Some of them are insulation tests, applying DC or AC high voltage, or they perform a tangent delta or partial discharge measurement at the very low frequency of 0 0.1 Hertz. Uh, we have to remember that whenever we apply high voltage to the medium voltage cable, uh, when I say high voltage, I mean something around the nominal voltage of the cable, we are stressing the cable. Sometimes we have also to apply uh, a voltage that is higher uh, than the nominal voltage of the cable in order to amplify the signals that we are looking for, and this can sometimes reduce uh, the remaining life of the cable because uh, whenever you apply this kind of high voltage, if there is a defect, in order to amplify the signal that comes from this defect, uh, we are also uh, um, worsening the condition of that defect. For this reason, the remaining life of the cable is reduced. Uh, another issue is that uh, this information that comes from this standard routine, routine test must be analyzed uh, separately and uh, in the end what, what we have to do is to build a kind of statistics we have to merge some different uh, results in order to find a conclusion uh, so the um, the typical uh, the typical um, way uh, that people use in order to decide what are uh, the cable to be tested is uh, according to the age of the cable, according to the statistics or historical data. And the correlation of many different sources of data is a really difficult task. So one solution is to uh, introduce in the network a monitoring system that is able to uh, control the condition of the cable uh, every day, 24 hours. Uh, and one possible solution is represented by our device called Falcon. Um, so Falcon is a device that uh, is measuring the partial discharge activities of the cable itself. So the, cable, the medium voltage cable is made of several uh, pieces of cable uh, connected together, and this connection is called joint. 
And this joint is the most critical part of the medium voltage cable. So uh, the highest probability to have a failure is inside uh, one of these joints. So um, whenever there is a defect, uh, this defect produces a little spark. And this little, little spark is, a, is a, in the end, is a partial discharge. The partial discharge is, in the end, an electrical uh, signal in the range of the very high frequency, in the range of the megahertz, that travel along the cable and reach uh, the sensor that is placed, and we will see later where, in order to measure this signal. So if we measure the partial discharge activity, we are, in the same time, measuring the condition of the joints and the termination of the cables. This device uh, is not only a device that uh, performs the measurement, but also uh, save the measurement. So there is a built-in memory uh, able to um, say, uh, save the measurement and then plot some graphs. And because of the graphs, it's possible to make analysis. If um, something, as some defect is identified and uh, this defect is uh, worsening his condition, then an alarm will be uh, issued. So the operators uh, will be informed uh, by uh, Falcon by means of the um, of, because he's able to send an alarm. And later we will see how this device is able to inform everybody that something is going on. So um, every falcon is placed at uh, the beginning of the cable. So imagine this is the, uh, the place where there is the termination, so the, the, the start of the cable. So we will place a sensor here and uh, the Falcon is measuring what is coming from the cable. The Falcon uh, is provided with a web application, so it's enough to have a laptop or a mobile uh, with a simple web browser. Then we can get access to, the, to every Falcon and see uh, what uh, is measuring. In case there is a defect, there is an alarm. Uh, there is an alarm uh, that uh, is divided in five levels. So we can say here in this example, uh, these five bars represent the five level of the uh, of the possible uh, severity. So green means everything is fine. Then if it becomes uh, yellow, orange, red, or the last is violet. Uh, is telling us that the fault, uh, the defect is uh, uh, becoming uh, more and more uh, problematic. It's not necessary for any operator to be an expert in the partial discharge analysis because uh, this device do everything automatically. So once you switch on the device, automatically it set up every threshold, every full scale range for the best uh, for the best uh, quality of the acquisition so there is a, um, for sure one uh, sensor to be placed uh, around the uh, grounded shield of the cable so there is a termination and uh, from the termination there is always a ground shield where this sensor will be placed around uh, around it. Since we are measuring uh, partial discharges, it's important to have uh, a signal that synchronizes the measurement to the line frequency. And then, uh, as uh, I said before, the alarm can be, uh, can be uh, seen by the operator through a web application. This is an example in this picture of a real installation. So this is a line. So these are the three phases. This is the sensor. The sensor, this, this type of sensor is equivalent of this one. So is a, 
HFCT, so high frequency current transformer, uh, is a clip-on CT, so you don't uh, need to disconnect the cable, the wire, in order to place the sensor. You can open it and close it around, around the cable itself. So it's a plug-and-play device and can be installed in a few minutes with simple operations. It configures itself automatically and once it's powered, it's immediately operational. So the, the Falcon is provided also uh, with the possibility to communicate through protocols. Uh, the most important of this protocol is the IEC 61850 communication protocol. This gives the possibility to integrate the Falcon into an existing network. So if there is a control room with already existing monitoring systems, uh, as usually happen in the substations, uh, so it's enough that you uh, program your SCADA uh, with the information provided by Falcon, then you can see in, uh, in uh, the screen of the control room all the information that you can get from the Falcon. And this is extremely important because uh, this gives the possibility to use a standard protocol uh, and uh, the integration of, a, of a, an, an extra device in the network uh, do, must always not add the difficulties. So uh, the possibility to use this standard protocol is a big advantage. Being able to monitor a lot of cables is also giving the possibility to address the maintenance teams only where a defect is present. So we are uh, enhancing the met methodology. So instead of um, trying, let, let me say guess, what is the cable that must be tested every day according to the statistics, according to the age of the cable, uh, we, we, we change the, the point of view. So uh, we monitor all the cables, we see what cable is okay, what cable is not okay, then we identify the cable that is not okay, we go there with the, the test van, and then the operators can do all the tests, uh, all the tests they think is correct to do in order to identify, uh, for example, the location of the defect and then implement the actions of, uh, of the repairing, for example. So if you can identify a cable with defect before that this defect become a fault, you can um, take the proper action for actions, for example, um, the user that is supplied, the consumer that is supplied by that cable can be supplied by another cable so for the user point of view, they will never see an energy interruption. And uh, um, this is in the end a big, big, big advantage. Now we go a little bit more in details and we will see how Falcon is working in order to implement a reliable monitoring system. So as we said before, it, it is extremely simple. Uh, in few minutes, any operator can uh, be uh, can be able to uh, connect the Falcon. So it's just in, it's enough to provide the power supply, uh, connect through a BNC cable uh, the synchronization signal and the uh, sensor for the partial discharge measurement. Falcon is provided with two uh, LAN ports. <coughs> for the uh, communication through this uh, LAN port is, is possible to get access to the web uh, application and also to uh, listen to what Falcon is communicating to the substation bus through the protocols. Um, coming to the mechanical connections can be provided with magnets or with the IN guide. So this you, you can choose and you can see that the installation, the placement of the Falcon in uh, whatever you need is extremely easy and flexible. Uh, the most used sensor is called HFCT and it is placed around the grounded shield. 
So in case of uh, uh, this type of cable uh, with the three separated uh, cable with three separated wires, what we have to do is to place the sensor around the three wires or if uh, we have to monitor this kind of table uh, of a cable with a single shield, then we can place uh, the sensor in it. Uh, I have to uh, highlight the fact that uh, Falcon is a device that is tell to you uh, if the line, I mean the cable, uh, is a, if in the cable there is a defect. So we can identify what cable is, but it's not telling you what phase is. Uh, uh... Sorry, Andre, can you switch off your uh, mic, microphone? Because we, okay, thanks. Sure, okay, I'm sorry, yeah. Um, so we are talking about a low cost device a single channel so what we can ask to this kind of device is to identify what is the cable with a defect once it is identified then uh, the maintenance team can go and localize the uh, localize the defect do whatever they think is necessary to do so uh, let me say now that also the localization of the defect is not an information that you can get uh, from uh, the uh, Falcon itself. You can make a post analysis of the signal of the acquisitions uh, that you can download from the memory of the Falcon. Then you can do your analysis and try to localize where is the defect. But uh, it's not an information that you can get automatically from the Falcon. Uh, the HFCT needs uh, that an operator uh, go very close to the termination in order to place this uh, um, this sensor. If for some reason this is not a, an operation that is allowed, it, uh, the operator can choose another type of sensor called TEV antenna that is placed on the metallic enclosure of the panel. Um, this is a device provided with magnets. So the device is enough that you touch the metallic enclosure and it will be immediately connected. So the difference between the two sensors uh, is, uh, is that this can always be placed uh, because you see it's not necessary to open this door and uh, with your hands go inside and place a sensor. Uh, but uh, TEV, sen uh, TV antenna is a little, bit, a little bit less sensitive than HFCT. So if you can choose, we recommend the use of HFCT instead of a TEV antenna. But the TEV antenna is also a good sensor. So uh, two images that show real uh, installations. So this is a, this is a DIN guide where Falcon is placed. This yellow Ethernet cable is the cable used um, to connect Falcon to the substation bus. Uh, this is a Rogowski coil. This, in this case, we use the Rogowski coil to take the 50 Hertz signal. And this is the HFCT connected uh, around the um, shield of the cable. This is another example where Falcon is placed on the, on the metallic enclosure through the magnets. And this is the TV antenna. And, and also this sensor is placed through magnets. We already mentioned what is an HFCT and what is a, what is a TV antenna. So we are not going uh, to repeat, you can read here. But what is important to underline once again is that it's uh, possible to place Falcon and the sensors when the cable is online. So you don't need to uh, switch off the energy from the cable. So you don't need to program these kind of activities 
uh, before to decide to place uh, to install this type of monitoring system. Now we see uh, this is not a webinar uh, for the education on the partial discharge. So this is a very big topic uh, that will be discussed in uh, different webinars. But since we are discussing about partial discharge, uh, we will see few slides that just um, highlight very few basic concepts. So um, the partial discharge is a signal that is uh, depending on, on the type of the defect. So there, there will be um, mainly three types of uh, defect. One can be an internal defect, can be a surface defect, or can be a corona discharge. Uh, these uh, three uh, defects will result in three different uh, patterns in the standard PRPD, phase resolved partial discharge partner. So this uh, shape for, uh, the, for the experts that uh, analyze this type of signal every day of their life means a lot. And when they say when they see this type of shape, they immediately recognize that is an internal partial discharge. Then, if there is this kind of triangle in this position in respect to the synchronization signal, uh, is clearly a surface PD, and this is a corona. Corona is definitely uh, not harmful, but internal PD is harmful. That's why there is this indication that tells that the internal PD is more harmful than and then dangerous than the surface PD, and surface PD is uh, more uh, harmful than corona. But when uh, we perform a field measurement, there is a high probability that we are also measuring noise. Noise or more than one phenomenon in the same time. So if we observe the measurement just from the phase resolved the partial discharge pattern, we see all the phenomena overlapped one over each other, then it's almost impossible to uh, perform an accurate analysis. So we have to find a solution to solve this issue. And the solution that uh, Falcon offer is the so-called TF map. So instead of analyzing the pattern from this point of view, it analyzes the pattern from this point of view. So the difference between this pattern and this pattern is that uh, this pattern represents the frequency content of each uh, partial partial discharge uh, pulse. So every dot in this uh, map represents an electrical pulse. Every electrical pulse has a frequency content that is mapped in clusters. So if you see this high density uh, cluster means that there is a phenomena with this fingerprint, let me say, in terms of frequency, then there is another region in the frequency and a, and a third region in the frequency. If we uh, see only the, 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 the dots that belong to this region, we can see that this is just noise because every dot is not correlated to the synchronization signal. So, uh, because the partial discharge has a sense, is a partial discharge phenomena if uh, the dots are located and somehow correlated to the phase of the 50 Hz signal. In this case, there is no correlation. This means that is simply noise. But we see 
that this noise has a very high amplitude. So if we I don't if I don't remove this noise from this pattern, I'm not able to see what there is below the noise. So applying a filter, I mean, so if I just want to see this cluster, then I'm able to see that there is uh, an internal PD or a surface PD. So what I what I want to say with this slide is that Falcon automatically acquire all the signals and automatically is able to uh, classify every phenomena, uh, dividing every pulse in regions here in the TF map, and then uh, is able to understand what is noise and what is a partial discharge signal. So everything is automatic. Is absolutely not necessary for any user to be expert in reading about this. Everything is automatic. Um, so this slide uh, describe what is the logic behind. So we acquire the entire pattern, then we uh, plot in in the TF map all the um, clusters. We identify what is noise, what is partial discharge. Then we are able to remove the noise because we identify that this is noise and we just take care about what is partial discharge. Now, how Falcon can inform the user that there is an alarm? So there is a LED here. Uh, so if the operator is uh, just passing in front of the Falcon without any laptop or mobile connected to it or to the network, you can see, the user can see from this LED that if become red, that Falcon is uh, uh, rising an alarm. So this is the most easy way uh, to see if there is an alarm. Then, uh, as we said before, we can connect to the Falcon through a web browser, or um, there is another uh, possibility. So Falcon is provided with a dry contact that switch his uh, status. So there is a commutation from close to open or open to close. And when this happens, uh, this means that there is an alarm. Uh, you can see that Falcon uh, provides a lot of flexibility because if uh, your substation is uh, prepared to receive uh, signals, uh, messages through the 6150 protocol, it's possible. Otherwise, uh, it's enough to detect the commutation of a dry contact and then uh, handle the information from a dry contact. That is easy. This is an example of the um, web application. Once you are connected to the Falcon, this is the home page where you see uh, clearly the alarm status. Green means that everything's fine, but if the color change, and the color is represented here, so green, yellow, orange, red, violet, is telling us that something is going wrong. So it's not necessary that we analyze the graph. Uh, and you see, uh, you go in details looking to the TF map. It's enough to decide what to do just looking to the traffic light. But if you are interested to see uh, more in details what are the real acquisition of the Falcon, then there is the graph section that uh, is uh, showing you um, what are the trends of the different phenomena that are identified. So the different colors means different phenomena. This violet graph represents the amplitude. Qmax is the amplitude in volt or millivolt. 
of phenomena number one and the green is a second phenomena so we can see that is quite stable over the time and here below you see the time every dot in this graph is one acquisition so mm, there are a lot of information uh, the amplitude the repetition rate this is also a very important parameter because uh, a partial discharge signal can can be uh, can have a high amplitude so we are we say that is a strong signal but it's also important to understand if um, his activity is uh, frequent or not so high amplitude but low repetition rate um, the, the combination of these two makes the decision for the falcon to rise an alarm or not so it's a combination of amplitude and repetition rate so it's important that the amplitude is increasing and also the repetition rate is increasing okay we can discuss a lot about this but um, there will be separate section that explain more much more in detail what is amplitude what is repetition rate and some other um, information that you can, get, you can get from the falcon but what must be uh, understood is that uh, all the acquisition are plotted in graphs for the clear understanding of uh, any operator even if uh, the operator is not familiar with the partial discharge analysis because the analysis you can see here below is performed immediately and automatically by the falcon itself so every time with your mouse you click on one of these dots the corresponding uh, acquisition is showed here below there there are always the traditional phase resolved the partial discharge pattern and also the corresponding tf map in this example is clear uh, clearly shown that if we observe the acquisition from this point of view we are not able to understand that uh, this pattern is composed by two different phenomena but if we observe the acquisition from this point of view is immediately clear that is composed by two phenomena by implementing this logic is also possible to uh, track two different phenomena that's why we have two different trends here and if one of those increase his amplitude then an alarm will be issued in case you install a very large number of falcons then you have a very large number of information to handle so um, there are several ways um, you can you can as we said before integrate your falcon by using the 6150 or you can create a uh, html a page that uh, with a list of ip address and one by one you can uh, be connected to the to the to each falcon then we can uh, provide uh, you a, a, a tiscada this is the name of our software that uh, uh, we can uh, prepare for you a comprehensive uh, software that automatically um, uh, take the information from um, every falcon and uh, put in a single screen all the information as you like or it's also possible to extract the uh, all the information through an industrial protocol called uh, OPC UA through this protocol is also possible to extract the raw data for your uh, separated analysis if you wish if you are able if you have time if you have skills if you have skill enough to do it uh, Um, if you want to integrate Falcon using the 650, uh, Falcon provides you 
the uh, so-called ICD file. This is a configuration file uh, that uh, describes all the variables, let me say variables, all the information that Falcon can uh, broadcast to the substation bus. So this Falcon is used by uh, the SCADA engineers to prepare uh, the existing SCADA, existing SCADA uh, in order to receive the information and handle the information from every Falcon. So the, um, the 6150 is a very straightforward method. So take the ICD file, including the existing SCADA, uh, all the points that are described by ICD file, and then uh, just uh, listen from the substation bus what are the uh, messages that Falcon is uh, publishing on the substation bus. The information that you can, that can get are alarms, but also the acquisitions, the measurements. So uh, Falcon is provided with a standalone memory, but if you want to uh, make a backup, a separate, separated backup, uh, because it's also correct, because uh, Falcon, for some reason, can be damaged uh, during the activity. Something can happen to the Falcon itself. So if, if you don't want to lose uh, the data, it's a good idea to implement a sort of automatic uh, interrogation, extract the acquisitions, and then uh, do a separated backup. Everything is possible through the 6150 protocol.